so nice to see you back. Thank you for having me. You've got family, close mm -hmm. friends in Turkey, all of them hearing a lot of negative messages mm -hmm. about journalists, about what you do. So how does that translate into your relationships with them? My family and friends fortunately value great journalism. Um, so they're more concerned about why we're going there. The thing I heard from and not just safety? from my family and my safety, but the first thing they ask is, why is CBC sending you? They must know something's going to happen. <laughs> That's how people think of, of the West uh, in Turkey and in the region too. They think that we have knowledge that something bad is going to happen and that's why we're sending well, journalists there. Even though there are many, many outlets from around the world who have been in Turkey for quite some time with dozens of journalists, not just a small bureau like we have. So that's part of the issue. The bigger issue though, right across the board, that we talk about the word polarization, uh, it's constantly in your mind in Turkey because people are so divided into different camps. You know, on the street people are very friendly with each other, but people read one newspaper that tells you exactly what point of view they're coming from. Maybe they're pro-government, maybe they're anti-government, maybe they're secularists, maybe they're more religious. Um, and it's not like here where we have you know, a few newspapers and a few television outlets. So when you hear the, the volume of arrests and networks being shut down, uh, it's, there are hundreds of channels and hundreds of newspapers, big hmm. and small. Um, and they're, they, most of them don't follow the journalistic guidelines uh, that we would so ahead of time. Do so people just consume what reinforces their point of view then? Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is a really dangerous thing, right? Yep. I mean, it, le it leads to hard lines. That's right. And misinformation, um, false uh, information, even when we're filing stories, um, we obviously look at multiple sources here, wherever we report from. But it's not the same um, accuracy and drive for ethics that you see across the board. So when you first went there for mm -hmm. CBC, came back, you're back to mm -hmm. Turkey again. Do you see a difference? Can you feel it? The shift is palpable. We feel, felt it as, as soon as we got there, but also in the way you're treated in the street. It hasn't been the case like you saw in that CNN footage. Um, but before when people would ask, who are you with? We'd say, oh, we're with Canada's public broadcaster. It's similar to the BBC. Then people would get a sense of it. They usually talk to us. Now, especially in protest situations, when people ask, it's not in the same tone. And we have to determine whether, you know, how much information, obviously we're going to say we're journalists. We might say, you know, we're with a, a, a wire agency or, you know, we might not give the network's name. Out of self-protection. Out of self-protection. Uh, you know, we just, we're just there to do the story because there is a lot of suspicion, particularly since the attempted coup last summer, also because of the message they're getting from the government, uh, you know, about some journalists. So they, once that seed is planted, and we see it being planted in the United States as well, it's very hard to convince people that you are trying to really just tell a story. Reporting on a particular story, um, if they don't like, you know, where some journalists, they're reporting on um, the Kurdish issue in the Southeast. Uh, just by speaking to certain people, they, you could get labeled uh, a terrorist just by trying to cover that story. So, so this is where you were born. Mm -hmm. This is where your family is. Is it hard to see where Turkey is at right now? Sure, it, it's it's difficult personally to to watch um, you know this much turmoil. You know, in the in the first six months we were here uh, a week after we got there. There were so many bomb attacks. It was the assassination of the Russian ambassador, economic problems, and then living under a state of emergency, all of that. So it's disappointing because for a long time, Turkey was doing really well. We tend in the, in the West, I think, to we see things in black and white sometimes for, for other countries. So I would caution against that, and that's how I see my role. That's why I'm glad I'm there. But in a place where things are certainly not even close to black and white, uh, like in Turkey, the history, the nuances, how journalism has played a role in, in good and bad in Turkey in the past, the misconceptions about the West in Turkey, having all of that in your arsenal, um, I think helps tell uh, a more fulsome story. Thanks for this. You're welcome.